What is good, y'all? Shanta Smooth Game Man, SGG Family. It's your boy Smooth Guy Game, aka Head Coach Smooth. Back with another Lions Rebuild, baby. If you guys are ready for this, uh, getting closer and closer to that Super Bowl next video, hopefully, as long as we get this win, should be that one. We can see if we're back to back champs. But before we overlook that, we got to go ahead and get into today's game against another division rival. Green Bay Packers are 11 and 6, are going up against us. And as you can see, Coach, it's not often that you play someone for a third time, but it's familiar for this week with the Packers. Uh, chess match or a hard hitting brawl. I'm honestly probably gonna go more on the hard hitting brawl side. They ain't all that smart up there. I mean, it's not we play like a chess game either. It's just big plays down the field. Who can get more big plays first? So, getting plus five hit power to all defensive players. I'm cool with it. But let me know what you guys are thinking of the series so far, man. Let me know how you guys are enjoying it. If you guys wanted to continue past this season, let me know. We got a long way to the next Madden. So. I need to start up another series, maybe a uh, fantasy draft series again, like I did in the last Madden. Or if you just want to see this con series continue to Dwayne Thomas retires, let me know. We can definitely keep moving forward with a lot of that. So getting to the weekly strategy, though, before we get into this postseason game, I think we're definitely going to defend the short pass here against them. We'll go half pads, throw it medium on offense, go half pads as well. And I did, I already know that I did uh, switch up my X factors to be my two pass rushers. So hopefully we can get after the quarterback a lot today. So I'm gonna go with that uh, two and a, or that five sack goal as we ended up getting like either five or a little bit more like six sacks in the last postseason game. We're the number one team as far as defensive sacks go. So I think that's definitely a goal we can achieve today, especially with both my X factor pass rushers engaged. It's, there's an injury to starting strong safety running Harrison Jr. So I mean, I might put Kirby Joseph in over there over Keith Holcomb. I'll have to go look at my depth chart real quick. Is the offense okay? I went half pass today. We went full pass last time. Nobody got hurt. I go half pass. This dude gets back spasms. In the post, you can't play through back spasms. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what back spasms are, but you can't play through that, bro, for a postseason. Just for one postseason game? All right, so strong safety. My options are Mike Hughes, who's, I guess, 84 overall strong safety. Uh, we got... Oh, wait, what's Keith Holcomb? He's a 69 overall. Wagner's an 80. Joseph's a 78. We go to free safety. We're still about the same amount. So I might go Kirby Joseph. Let Holcomb back up. I mean, this is a postseason. If this is a regular season, I wouldn't mind letting him get some, some P2E, but this is the, the postseason. I need somebody that's going to come up here and make plays. So I'm going to put Kirby Joseph right there. As far as my sub linebacker, I got to make sure that I didn't get messed up. Okay, yeah, nah. We're good. All right, cool. So with all that being done, man, we have the lineup set up. We have everything perfectly set up. We're playing the Packers once again. Uh, we split with them on the season series, so our only division loss came against them. Let's see. We won the first one 45-13, to 13, but lost the second matchup 36-38. Once again, putting up a lot of points, but it was the defense that slacked off. The pass game really kind of got active here today. So we got to look to try to limit that this time. Elijah Jones, rookie, leading the Packers all the way to the championship game. So a great season for him. We got a whole Watson, so he's not getting up a bunch. Robert Tunyon's got to be stopped. But other than that, they didn't have too much production from anybody else. So one receiver to worry about, one DB on X-Factor, one-on-one matchup all game. With that being said, I'm ready to go ahead and try to go for my second straight Super Bowl. If y'all ready, let's hop into the gameplay. Here we are. Postseason time. Let me turn myself down in the headphones so I can go ahead and coach these guys up. But we're going to start on the pistol, as you can see down below. Baltimore went ahead and took care of the Cleveland Browns 28-20. to 20, As they had a division matchup on their end as well. Went ahead and took care of that one. So if we're able to make it, we will be facing the 10-7 Baltimore Ravens. But we got to take care of our division opponent this week too as well. Clean pocket throw goes out to the sideline. As we get our first positive play of the day. It's going to be tough. This team obviously put up points. Now, both times, whether we won or lost, we put up a lot of points, too. So it's going to be whose defense gets the most stops here today is Cam Akers. Ready to continue where he left off last game. 15 rushes, well over 100 yards. A lot of yards per care. I think he's at like six or seven. 
yards per carry. A bunch of big runs broken off just like that. Getting started here today with a big 15-yard carry, and then Dwayne Thomas throws it right to the DB. Not sure what he saw on that one. Jameson Williams didn't look like he had any type of positioning over Eric Stokes. Nobody's blitzing, so he didn't have to rush the throw. That was just terrible. Sometimes he makes throws like that, and you can't just help but wonder what the heck going on. And I'll be going back to Green Bay to see if they can capitalize on an early toner over him. As rookie Elijah Jones looks to lead this team past this division rival into the postseason. Seeing a little bit of a blitz there to the corner, but they able to knock it loose. Now we are, as you guys know, missing strong safety. Ronnie Harrison Jr., so expect to see Kirby Joseph out in the field a little bit. Third and three here. We'll send another quick blitz, and we take it away from him. Jamal Dean comes up. He says, I don't need an X Factor to get picks. I'm going to just go get him. Dives in front of the receiver and is able to take that one away. And just like that, we're just playing patty cake with the ball. Quick slant route right here. He just dove in front of him for it. Great play. Come on, Thomas. We got to look to do better. Good run play. Ooh, good juke move to get to the outside. Blocks gets set up. And he spins through a couple of tacklers and defenders. Speeding his way to the end zone. Cam Maker scores. If you can't throw, you might as well run. The first one was 15. This one, I don't know if that was 30 or what, but that was the most impressive run I've ever seen. Jukes past the defender when he didn't even really need to. And then gets stuck here in between three Packers defenders, is able to make it out alive, spin off, and then just accelerate. Just look at the acceleration. And now the defense just gotta keep pursuing, man. If the run game gonna be like that, we should probably just go with the run focus. I did not think that we'd be able to have a run game as strong as we had this past two games. And that's what makes the postseason so different. You'll see things come out and take over for your team that was not working during the regular season. The run game wasn't all that popular during the season. I think you only had like 4.2, 4.5 yards to carry, which is still pretty good. But I don't even think he was up there in like the top 10 for rushing yards this season. And then here in this postseason, he's just looking like an all-out animal. And it'll be up to us to stop them too as well. Aaron Jones in the backfield looking to maybe replicate some things that we've been able to do. We're seeing a blitz here, and they're finally going to get there as it's Nick Bosa. They're going to give him the half a sack. As, I, don't, I don't know. If the, is that how it was actually tracked in real life? If somebody else comes up and even, like, touches you? Because he didn't. Clinton didn't touch the quarterback at all. If anything, he touched the back of Nick Bosa's back and pushed them both down. Is that still a half sack in real life? Let me know down below. If it is, that's crazy and unfair, I think. But... Uh, hey, it is what it is, I guess. Second and 23 after the sack there. They'll go with the draws. Aiden Hutchinson's going to almost get there. He's able to get the throw off to his running back who comes up and makes a play. Actually, not running back. I think that's that Christian Watson. Is he in number 10 today? That's LSJ. Visca Chenault, number 10 today. Able to come up and make that play. Five pressure here. We're going to get there from the outside, almost getting for the play. One-on-one -on -one down the field. I thought he caught it. I was about to demote uh, Trayvon Diggs so they didn't quit. We're still in the first quarter. We've seen two drives from each side now going into drive number three. And so far, it's got us leading seven to nothing. It's no pass game is seeming to have been working here. They've had troubles with sacks and interceptions. We just got interceptions and incompletions. So we'll have to see if that picks up here at all during the game. As there's our second catch of the game by DJ Chark Jr. Fighting his way forward for only about a gain of six. If we got to put this on the ground, let's put it on the ground. I'm, I'm all for it. Maybe we'll go into halftime and change the focus. If it still becomes a problem, as that throw goes out wide open, Cam Akers still in the pass game making everything work. If I got to give a postseason MVP, I'm honestly giving that thing to Cam Akers, man. He's done it in the past on the ground. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if we do get to the Super Bowl and he puts on a performance like this and he gets Super Bowl MVP. Because he definitely deserves it. A second and seven here from our own or from the other 43. As we hand off to him again, going to the outside. Got stuck behind his offensive line. Not able to break this one big. Not every run's going to be big, though. So it's okay, but it gets us to a third and four. I'd say this is a manageable field goal, possibly. But we're going to get a little bit closer for him anyway. First down. Great catch by Monra St. Brown. It will stay shotgun here. Trips go right back to him. With the catch getting tackled by three Packers defenders. Easy gain of five. We've got second and five out of 27. We're close to the red zone. 
It looks like Amon Ross and Brown's been the only catchable target here other than our running back. As we go out again, it gets tipped away. Dangerous pass could have been intercepted. I got to see better decisions from you, Dwayne. You, you're playing like a rookie right now, like you're scared or something. Half handoff goes out to the outside. Cam Makers getting enough for the first down. It puts us into the red zone as Frank Ragnow will go down with the stomach, shoulder injury. That should bring in rookie Scott Saxton at center. So best offense, six offensive linemen basically. So we shouldn't see much of a lack off here as the run goes up the middle for a huge gain. Like I said, shouldn't be much pressure on him. He's already good as it is. And that's a nine yard rush falling off the back of him. Throw goes out quick and that's a wide open DJ Char Jr. for the first. Big boy on big boy. Three tight ends on the field in the fullback. Goal line formation. We're gonna go with the half or fullback dive. And that is rookie Larry Gallery getting into the end zone. I think I'm saying, I don't even think he's a rookie anymore. I'm pretty sure this is his second season in the league, but young buck Larry Gallery able to take that fullback dive into the crib. Look at Saxton getting that block. Come on now, defense. Let's keep things moving. Let's keep dominating and knocking the ball loose. We don't even want to give up an inch. We want to go ahead and dominate this game early. 14 to nothing already. We're not even at the first quarter yet. But Elijah Jones looking to try to get this Packers team going, and he can't do it. One for seven, four yards. He's throwing more intercept or more incompletions than yards. And we're sending another blitz in here quick, and he's able to get that one out. Finally getting his second reception of the game. As that is Russell Gage Jr. for a 12-yard pickup. And they're finally moving the ball. It's the first first down that they've had in a long time. Drop back, throw goes out to the left side. Not able to get his feet in. So it'll be second and 10 now. After that pass, we're gonna send a blitz in crazy, but they also did a screen. Able to go ahead and read that, lock it up. That is rookie Kyle Wagner in the backfield. Able to make the play there on Jones. Losing them about four. So now we got third and 14. The screen pass was not it. 39 seconds left in this first. We're only rushing three as we've done a lot this game, honestly. He's got all day to throw. Two straight double teams and somebody can't get off on a one-on-one. -on -one. Why is Nick Bosa in coverage? How are you going to just let yourself get disrespected like that, Gatewood? That was Gatewood on the one-on-one, -on -one and he just could not get off at all. The other two are being double teams, so they got an excuse, but you were just straight up one-on-one -on, -one on the left or the at the right tackle. I don't remember what side they were. The field flipped on me. One-on-one -on, -one on the right tackle. You couldn't get off. Second and eight here. Sending four this time. He's going to get there. There you go. So you can get off on the guard, just not the tackle. Oh, I love the look. Even if we're not sending a blitz, make him think blitz. Scare him. Look at that. They had to call audible. A little trips open. Third and eight. Only sending four. Throw will go out to the side. Oh, no. Why dive for it? Why dive to knock it down? We could have dove for the interception. Gave us great field position. But instead, we will get a punt here as this one goes out of bounds at about the 24. So still good position. Come on, Thomas. I love it. Handoff to Cam Akers. Getting off to the outside. Speed, speed. Oh, he had to leap over a diving attempt and only gets about eight. But he's running strong today. Breaking tackles, finding the holes, fighting for extra yards. He's almost at 100 already. We're not even out of the first half. Second and eight. We'll go right back to him to see if we can get the first. Breaks off a tackle on first contact. And has to be taken down by a gang of Packers defenders. This Detroit team does so many things well. The blocking is looking good. We run the ball with our running backs, our fullback, our quarterback. We pass the ball okay. And of course, I mean, haven't really passed it all that great today. But the game is still early. You know we still love to sling that rock even if we have a big lead. We'll go with another direct handoff here to Cam Akers up the middle. Breaks off a tackle and accelerates forward to get to the 36-yard line. Did he just smack him on the booty? My man just hit him with a good game. <laughs> a good game from the other team. That's not good as a spin move ends up with him on the ground. Looks like we're trying to read options. They're not working. That one, they perfectly covered up the running back and the quarterback. So we got second and 12 as our first negative play from the first start of the game. It's Cam Akers up the middle again. He might go off for 200 today. Nine for 136. We have a lead, so he's definitely going to see the ball more. That boy breathing heavy already. I might take him out, honestly, at the second half. If we have a big enough lead, 
Maybe look to try to get him out of this ball game. Cam Akers up the middle again. Gets us into the red zone. It looks like we actually did go with the running back changes. We'll go to the outside here with a good handoff. He's breaking tackles too. That's a JV and Hawkins. He gets a 13-yard carry. So maybe it's just the Packers. They ain't hitting good. Because <laughs> he's even able to break off to the outside. Let's watch his big run here. Just a simple outside or inside zone that he takes to the outside with a great block by the tackle. Breaks off one, two more, and then gets to the outside getting sticky. We'll see him stay in as, you know, Cam Akers deservably getting a little bit of a break. First and goal at the seven. We'll go with another inside zone. He'll take it to the outside again. Great kick out block, by the way, from Tyler Decker. Actually, that was Cam Akers back in the game. I thought it was Hawkins, but we've seen some great kick out blocks from Tyler Decker on the outside. We'll go with another inside zone. He'll take this one directly up the middle as the whole, everybody but the right tackle went that way. Two runs, we don't get in, so we'll go empty on third and goal. Looks like they'll send a blitz in the Monroe St. Brown will catch the first touchdown pass of the game. There we go, Detroit. Let's get a 21 scump in the first half. Okay, we're back. My camera messed up a little bit there, but we're able to get, oh my good one play, fumble. They try to go with the handoff there. We stand them up, knock the ball loose, and then Evan Gatewood picks it up. So not only that, we're going to have the ball at the four-yard line. So 21 scump officially complete. But now I had a chance to definitely go up 28 as we hand this off to Cam Akers to the outside. Ah, that would have been dope to get it on one run. But we're two yards away from making this 28 nothing. We'll go under center. Another handoff. It's a dive play up the middle. Ooh, he tried to limbo his way into the end zone. That wasn't going to work. So now we got third and goal. Cam Akers looking to make something happen here. Handoff will go back to him up the middle, and that's a touchdown. If we can take a 20 at nothing, I'll probably hop in last play of the half to not only change our focus to a run focus, but also put in the backups entirely on offense and defense. It's that time to start cutting plays again, man. This game is just looking all out dominant. Second and 19 after the sack goes nowhere. They try to go to screen and we read it. We read that so good. Evan Gatewood was over there to knock the ball loose. The defensive lineman didn't get fooled. Just like that, we might have a quick three and out here, man. Third and 19. Dropping back, looking, throws it before he gets set. That's a one-on-one -on -one down the field and we knock it loose. All right, after a three and out by them, we have a chance here to keep this lead extending. If we get to 35 before the half, that's going to be crazy as Dwayne Thomas puts his shoulder into the defender. Oh, now we just blatantly disrespecting Green Bay. My dude put his whole shoulder into the safety. First and 10, we'll go with another handoff. This time Cam Akers going up the middle of the field. Easy first down. Two back-to-back -back plays, two first downs, and that will take us to the two-minute warning. First and 10 now from the only 33. He's going to drop back for a pass. This will go long one-on-one, -on -one, and it'll be tipped out of bounds. I think that was a Monra that he tried to go to. Was not able to get to him. Yeah, Monra's the only one with tape on his arm. So, at least he's easy to tell apart. Throw goes out here to Jamison Williams with the catch. That's how I should tell these dudes apart. I didn't even notice the swag difference. DJ Chart Jr. has the one-arm sleeve. Monra St. Brown has the elbow tape. And Jamison Williams has nothing. <laughs> so, now after that catch by Monra, six catches, only 39 yards. It's been all short stuff. We got first and goal here. Clean pocket throw goes out and it's tipped down. Lucky wasn't picked off. We'll have to go empty now. Amara Jamison tied up on the bottom. Looks like they're trying to like brank bracket cover down. So got one inside, one outside. He's going to get to the outside. Dwayne Thomas is going to throw it on the run. He's finding his receiver. That's J.J. Chart Jr. That's how you clear the pocket and find the open man. I love it, man. 35 to nothing before the half. Here we are, man. Second half. We managed to put up another touchdown before the end of the half with the starters. So we got complete backups on the field right now. So I'll try to keep up with numbers. Uh, hopefully I was able to put everybody in. I think I still see Nick Bosa out there. I don't know how he stayed out. I definitely put in like backups. Maybe it's because like the rushing and stuff like that didn't work out too well. So you might still see some starters get out there. But for the most part, it'll be backups. And we'll see if the Packers can even do anything against that. Uh, you know, they'll have all their starters out, but don't want anybody to get injured. We're up 42-0 going into the second half, so 
We'll be cutting some plays too as well. Only showing like interesting stuff here as the end of the game goes on. As hopefully they can go ahead and look to put together something to move forward. So third and three. As Elijah Jones will step back in the shotgun. He'll hand off to Aaron Jones and we're in the backfield again. Evan Gatewood still out there helping out. But you see Harding and Mitch Scott who we both drafted in the last draft. Also in that backfield making it happen. Rookie Elijah Meeks getting his chance in the postseason as the only start he made this season when Dwayne Thomas got injured was against the Packers too. And he was able to ball against them. So I will see if he would be able to ball still with backup receivers and tight ends and offensive linemen in. And so far looking pretty good. 11-yard pass to start things off. So our receivers, we got Quintez Cephas, Zach Teller, and Julius Carter. Running back Javion Hawkins as he's still making big plays with his legs. Great run there. He's two for 22 the other day with that nine-yard rush. And we'll look to see if they can even still put up points and really drive this play clock down. Play action here. Throw will go out down the field. He's got a wide open Quintez Cephas making the catch. Let's try to make something happen here. Second and nine. Detroit trying to get more and more plays down the field. Looking. Fires. He has Quintez Cephas once again for the first down. Nice grab. Puts us in the red zone as well. And just like that, we're in a position to be able to possibly score. Just that quick. First and 10. Under center. Clean pocket by this backup offensive line. And, ah, that ball is not loose. Come on, Detroit. Let's get back in that end zone, man. Let's really put this game away. I mean, honestly, if the backups are able to come in and shut down like this, it might really be to a point where we have to just go to get up out of here early, man. I mean, I normally would like to love to watch, you know, the full game. But this game is just getting completely out. It's a shutout. It's a double 21 skump at this point. You know, the pocket rolling out finally gets set down. And it's not like we got true clock on either. I mean, the clock's still just running at normal speed just because the computer doesn't, like, obviously they're not trying to, like, you know, get out of here or anything like that. I mean, although this is postseason, I figure, like, any if a team was in this situation, first of all, this would be so embarrassing to put on TV. But I bet they'd be running the clock slow and everything like that. Dang. We come back in there and she get a stop for once. Now, we will still get three out of it, but. And just so we don't have to necessarily skip to the end, I guess we can come up here to the booth real quick. First time that we've had to do this in the postseason because we've never had, ooh, a fumble. Ah, then they picked it back up. Oh, no, we threw an interception right back. Oh, they finally scored. There they go, 35-yard touchdown pass. Finally putting up some offense. We had to come to the booth just for them to do it. I had to get off the field. So not only did we put the backups in, but the backup coaches in. <laughs> Offensive coordinators down there acting like head coach right now as I come up to the booth to just enjoy a nice leisurely win here as we dominate the Packers in game three. The first two games were, I guess you could say, kind of close. A lot of offense. This time we were able to put up a lot of offense, but actually have the defense show up too as well. So we already know we got Baltimore in the next round. Ooh, another interception by Keith Holcomb. Okay, way to come in and make a play, young bud. Now, offense still ain't moving though, unfortunately, but that'll basically do it, man. I mean, they have no offense here for us. They're going backwards. Let's just go ahead and celebrate this victory like LeBron did celebrating breaking the uh, career point total and get out of here to the championship. it is y'all we are able to go ahead and complete a dominating victory here from start to finish really you know 48 to 7 here we were able to let the backups go ahead and eat a little bit elijah jones just i mean he's a rookie he was not ready for prime time one touchdown three interceptions Dwayne thomas only had to throw for less than 100 yards 12 for 18 96 yards two touchdowns and a pick probably one of his worst games but i mean if your worst game comes in a dominating win like this you'll take it eight i mean we almost threw for more with uh, elijah meeks behind him and the Cam Akers, 19 for 185, three touchdowns. Hawkins, only 38 yards there. Powell got in the game for six for 11. And then no real passing stats, but like I said, it was all dominance. I mean, I thought I went back to rushing. Cam Akers, eight today. 
almost 200 yards rushing, three touchdowns. The defense was playing great all day, putting us in positions where we didn't have to gain too many yards. And that's exactly why we were able to win this with probably like as far as team stats go, we still had 400 yards of offense, but when have we ever had 250 yards rushing compared to only 160 uh, passing? This game was complete, no domination from start to finish. How many, I gotta see how many sacks we finished today with. Oh, not that many, only three sacks total. So not too bad. Three interceptions from Holcomb, Dean and Diggs. Domination. That was probably the most non-stat driven dominating game that I've seen in my life. But like I said, we were able to put in the backups for the whole second half. We were up 42 nothing at halftime. And so Piggy went to the market, went to get the rings, walking home on the couch. Yes, sir. I love that. Went ahead and sent home a division rival too with the game like that. So plus five stat points and hit power for the next game. But we already know how this is about to go down. Let's go ahead and advance forward to Pro Bowl week. Unfortunately, I wish it were easier to see, you know, who made the Pro Bowl roster. Um, we'll go ahead and just quickly go through. I wish it was easy to see who made the Pro Bowl roster from the Super Bowl winning teams. Because unfortunately, like I'd have to go through every single player that I thought. I would probably just go through the players that I thought had a chance to make it to go ahead and find our guys. But I just can't believe that they don't have like an easier way to see it or, you know, some kind of thing. Let, let me get staff points. Be like, you get this many staff points because this many players went or like because this player went like specifically said a name. So that way I can know who made it, who didn't. And, you know, what we're kind of looking at from that aspect of COVID. Of course, we have upgrades and things like that. Let me go look at the adjust lineup screen. Did anybody's dev trait go up? Because that would be an indicator too of it as well. Sexton, we still don't even know what his dev trait is. Still normal, superstar, stars. No X factors, I'm on my receiving core. Dwayne Thomas is still X factor. Defense, superstar, superstar, X factor, X factor. Can't believe he's still normal dev. Wagner, Harrison, yep, okay. So nothing too big there. I think against, because we're going against Baltimore. I think even against them, we for sure would probably just want to stay the course as far as letting two pass rushers get the X factor to keep uh, Lamar Jackson in the pocket as much as possible. So there's that man looking scary and menacing already. <laughs> Let's go and see what this team looks like though before we get out of here and then we'll go ahead and exit for the day, man. As we look to try to go back to back in the Super Bowl, two players at 99 overall with Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. Uh, at running back, still got J.K. Dobbins, 95 overall. Receiving core is kind of light. Rashad Bateman, Allen Robinson Jr., and then Justin Ross. So we'll be fine on that aspect. We just got to watch the run game and the tight end. And then Lamar Jackson, too, as well. Offensive line, strong. So our defense is going to have their work cut out for them. Definitely we'll have both X Factors on the defensive line this game. Them defensively is pretty good too as well. Front seven, strong. Patrick Queen still looking good. Marlon Humphrey, 93 overall. Marcus Peters, so we'll have to be strong. This team is good on paper. Very good, actually very equal to us. Look at their overalls were 93 offense, 91 defense. Their 91 offense, 89 defense, 89 overall, 92 overall. So on paper, they're probably the toughest challenge that we will face this season, but we're ready for it, man. We'll look to go back to back here as I want to look at the year. Let's look at the yearly awards real quick. As I go ahead and close things out, man, I hope you guys are enjoying the videos and really liking the series up. Dwayne Thomas finished fourth for MVP voting, which is pretty impressive. I got coach of the year, though. Go look at the AFC awards. But I hope you guys are enjoying, man. Leave a like, comment, subscribe on your way out the video if you guys are enjoying and you want the series to come back quicker, faster. You want to keep going. Let me know down below if you want a fantasy draft series as we're getting closer to probably the end of this series' life. And we look to do something else before the next Madden comes out. So. Let's look at our side. Cam Akers finished third for player of the year. A.R. Brown, fourth. Defensive player of the year. Nick Bosa won it, breaking the record. Trayvon Diggs, third. Hutchinson, fourth. No rookies. Wagner finished sixth for defensive rookie. Thomas, fourth for best QB. Akers, second. Didn't he win off? Of, did, I, did I miss something? Oh, no. He finished behind Ezekiel Elliott. So, second and best halfback, too. Makes sense. A.R. Brown, second for best receiver. O-line, looks like we have three of my boys up there. Jackson Milligan and Ragno. Best D-line, Nick Bosa, of course. Hutchinson, best linebacker. Diggs, best DB. So I actually taking on some hardware this year. I'm not mad at it. But I'll catch you guys in the next video, man. When we come back out, it'll be Super Bowl week. So if you guys are enjoying, like I said earlier, like, comment, subscribe for your boys. Me, boy, SGG, aka The King of Games, aka Smooth Guy Game. And I'll catch you guys in the next one, man. I'm out.